What's going on guys? Welcome back to Clay's Coins. I believe confidence creates confidence. This is not financial advice. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button and we'll get right into the video. If you want about $12,600 in free stocks, all you have to do is set up a new account with Weeble with the link below. Clay's Coins, put a penny into that new account and you can get six free stocks until July 31st. After that, it's five. But all you have to do is put in a penny. You get can get generally on average between $30 and $300. That's an excellent ROI. However, you can hit the random number generator and get anywhere up to $12,600 in free stocks just for putting in a penny. And whenever you go ahead and sign up, it always supports the channel. It shows that we're doing a good job and that, you know, we will, should stay a sponsor of the channel. So go ahead and take advantage of that link, guys. Today, we're going to be looking at a country that just started regulating crypto officially. Is that good? Is that bad? And how does that work with the U.S.? Because right around the same time frame, now the U.S. wants to regulate crypto mining. They want to figure out what's going on with the power consumption and everything like that. So they definitely have a little bit to tie into each other. The countries aren't necessarily related. However, crypto is the common denominator. So we're going to get right into it. And as you guys can see here, we are on Bitcoinist.com with an article about Bitcoin trading and mining will now be regulated in Paraguay. This is something that I was quite alarmed by because I haven't heard too much with Paraguay and cryptocurrency, digital asset regulation, um, anything similar to that in the past, uh, recent anyways, in the media cycle. And um, Paraguay just came out of nowhere with some serious regulations and it looks to actually be a positive. Uh, we'll get into that right here. Bitcoin trading and mining will now be under the crosshair of the Paraguay government. Last month, the Chamber of Deputies of Paraguay endorsed a measure to regulate cryptocurrencies over opposition from the country's central bank. Bitcoinist reported that during a special session in May, deputies approved the modified crypto law draft by a vote of 40 to 12. So that is a very, very favored vote. That was not exactly, uh, that was pretty, pretty close there to unanimous. Um, now, Paraguay is laying the groundwork for regulating cryptocurrency activity after the country's senators approved the proposed legislation. Paraguay senators give nod to Bitcoin regulation. Friday, the Paraguay Senate approved a bill that would regulate and commercialize cryptocurrency trading and mining in the South American nation. This is huge. Um, obviously, when you talk about decentralization and peer-to-peer -peer basis, taking the third party out of it or any sort of regulation out of it is a huge perk and a massive positive aspect that comes with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin specifically. However, you know, it's almost a pipe dream, if you will. When it comes down to it, um, as long as you're operating in a country with any sort of strong governmental structure, it's going to regulate something that has billions and trillions of dollars flowing through it, which is what cryptocurrency has become. It's no longer this um, sacred kind of taboo digital thing that people don't really understand that you go on the dark web and get stuff with. It's completely Completely, I mean, there's Bitcoin ATMs all over the place. This is something you can go to Walmart and buy Bitcoin. You can have Bitcoin on Coinbase or many other cryptocurrency assets on Coinbase. Get a Coinbase card, I have one, and pay for things at a store directly as a, through a transaction with cryptocurrency. Those things didn't exist five years ago. They weren't even thought of 15 years ago. Now we have regulations and I don't think it's going anywhere and I don't necessarily think it needs to go anywhere. I think cryptocurrency can be even more successful with these regulations because it honestly is inevitable. It is, and as long as massive nations with huge mining operations aren't shutting crypto down, I think any regulation outside of that should be a positive catalyst. Fernando Silva Fecchetti, I probably butchered that. Minister of Technology, Information, and Communication in Paraguay was happy to announce the new law through Twitter. And as you can see right here, he tweeted, um, Crypto Paraguay, after an intense debate, we've approved the bill that regulates crypto asset activities. This new law establishes obligations, rights, and warranties to investors, to the consumer, and the government. Hashtag Bitcoin, um, hashtag crypto with crypto spelt incorrectly, which is an interesting strategy, and hashtag Paraguay. So you can clearly see he's trying to get Paraguay trending. Um, he's kind of, he spelled crypto correctly right here, so I'm not sure what that was. Maybe he was drunk, who knows. The country's chamber of senators had already approved the bill in December, but the chamber of deputies passed it with amendments last month. Consequently, the bill returned to the top chamber. So. This is huge, guys. Um, when you talk about the benefit right here, 
This bill also assigns the National Electricity Administration responsibility for facilitating the energy supply, while the National Securities Commission supervises commercial activity using crypto assets. So this is assigning the National Electricity Administration they are now responsible for responsible for facilitating the energy supply and the national securities commission will supervise the commercial activity of these crypto assets paraguay's two dams this is actually a pretty cool uh, little fact paraguay's two dams i'm going to butcher these names atipu and usina provide 85% of the country's entire electricity requirements. Therefore, the nation supplies reasonably priced energy. Just from these two dams alone, they can provide the required energy for 85% of their electrical requirements for the entire country, just off of two dams alone. Imagine if you only needed in America the Hoover Dam and one other large structure, and you were completely set when it came to electri electrical requirements. Um, that would be wild. However, that's why you can see the United States is a huge country. It is a massive, I mean, when you talk about geographic-wise, um, we're a very, very large, massive land. So it's much more difficult to spread electricity across an entire nation like you know instead of you know Paraguay which is much smaller um, population and uh, area wise this is an advantage for Bitcoin miners the proposed legislation pushes the energy advantages a step further by giving crypto miners the excess electricity produced by dams. That is huge. So any excess electricity that is being produced by the dams that they don't need to subsequently power the nation with, they can now send it to the Bitcoin miners. Bitfarms, a Canadian Bitcoin miner, is one of the largest mining companies in Paraguay with a 10 megawatt plant built in the city of Villa in that <laughs> situated in the country's south central region um this is huge guys according to reports companies operating in the cryptocurrency sector would be taxed similarly to those who trade in securities as a result under secretary of state for ta taxation will exempt them from paying a value added tax but they will be subject to income tax so they will be subject to income tax that puts way more tax money back into the nation which is something that is obviously not going to keep getting pushed under the table, swept under the rug. These countries can see the amount of money that is being traded in cryptocurrency assets. A lot of politicians aren't allowed to when they sign whatever oath, whatever form, um, registration type deal, whatever you have to go through to become a state elected official or you know a federally ele appointed official, you have to forfeit your right to trade digital assets at the current moment because there's not regulation on them and the tax is a lot of gray area. So this is, um, this is something that I thought would end up happening anyways because these people aren't able to trade it. They are only able to watch everyone make money off of it, and that is something that they have never been okay with in uh, pretty much governmental history. The government has never been okay with its people making money if it can't. So uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Putting that aside, though, it does lead into the next article here, which is Democratic lawmakers want federal regulators to track crypto mining, energy use, and emissions. Um, taking this D word out of it, we'll put politics aside because uh, an investigation found that largest companies use enough energy power to power all the homes in Houston. That is disgusting. It's crazy to me that a mining operation, which is merely, essentially, when you look at it, it's very hard on paper to go against the idea that it is for profit. If it's a Bitcoin mining operation, obviously, there's different purposes for it, but it's going to be, it's a business, it's a company, and with no regulation on it, when they're using the amount of uh, uh, CPU processing power that they do, um, this, is, this is a problem. It cannot just be left as a wild, wild west for people to figure it out as they go, especially when you have a certain political party in office right now that values clean energy more than any other party does almost, any major party, however. Um, so when that's a big thing, if you guys remember, Tesla has had different, um, Elon Musk has flirted with the idea of accepting cryptocurrency, then he gets uh, a lot of flack from the clean energy green initiative 
companies that have big money into these companies they get a lot of flack that it's not energy efficient it's not efficient for the environment it's not sustainable these are using too much electricity and you're an electric car company looking to change the world so it's rather hypocritical to have an electric car company and then support Bitcoin, which uses a tremendous amount of electricity to mine. Do you see the paradox here? However, I don't believe it's as big of a con as some do. Obviously, as we know with the media, uh, they never let a good crisis go to waste. So anything that they can use or amplify to leverage any sort of voting or political sense, they're going to do. You know what I mean? At the, when, at the end of the day, a lot of the time, they don't exactly have the people in their best interest or more of pawns to get votes to get them to and their lobbyists to uh you know approve things that they want to get done as sad as it is but congressional democrats are calling on the environmental protection agency and department of energy to address the recent proliferation of cryptocurrency mining within the u.s um if you didn't they're just saying there's a lot of this going on what's going on here in a letter sent friday Senator Elizabeth Warren and five other lawmakers said that the two agencies should work together to require crypto mining firms to disclose their energy use and emissions. I am completely in agreement in agreement with this. Obviously, Bitcoin is like it's like, you know, any sort of regulation concerned or quote unquote centralization when it comes to cryptocurrency is going to be looked at as a paradoxical statement when you look at Bitcoin being complete decentralization peer-to-peer. -peer. It's supposed to take the middleman out, so whenever there is a middleman involved, it feels like it shouldn't be. However, we need to have disclosed energy use and emissions. We need them to be able to report certain things and for it to have some sort of regulation. How much regulation? It absolute, absolutely should be state by state in my opinion. I lean more libertarian, so I definitely believe that it should be the state by state depending on the usages in each state. It should be up to them on what they you know, look to allow. Obviously, the uh, electrical grid requirements for Texas are going to be much larger than the electrical grid requirements for Montana or something like that. So obviously the threshold for what you should allow in Bitcoin mining operations, I believe, should be different on a state-to-state -state basis um, based on what the voters, the taxpayers, and what the electrical grids themselves can handle as a you know hybrid thing. Will it most likely play out like that? Probably not. We'll probably have a blanket federal um measurement from people who don't even understand anything about cryptocurrency, crypto mining, or electricity units of measurement, and then they'll put forth a law that says you can only go up to here, and then people will find loopholes. <laughs> that's kind of, you know, as sad as it is to say, that's one thing that seems to happen a lot of a lot of times today, is with, uh, today with our laws and regulations and stuff, but we'll see what happens with it. This is one thing, this is one reason why I'm a fan of it though, because the request comes after the group recently completed an investigation that began at the start of the year. According to the letter, data collected from seven of the largest mining companies in the U.S., including big household names such as Stronghold, Bitfury, and Riot, indicates that they can collectively use more than one gigawatt of electricity. Put another way, that it's almost enough to power all residential buildings in Houston. That is just the seven largest cryptocurrency mining companies in the U.S., not any others, just the top seven. So uh, the fact that they can power all of Houston with the power they're using to mine Bitcoin to sell for profit, that is worrying. That is something that is not sustainable in any measurement other than the people who are mining that are in it and making crazy money. They're going to want to do everything they can to stop this from happening. I do believe that there needs to be some sort of at least reporting so we're aware so we don't have to do investigations just to see how much electricity someone is using. That's not a thing in any other business or any other venture capitalistic way in any uh, situation at all. There's no other avenue that you can go and make money and not report how you're making it. That's just not something the IRS likes so it's inevitable that this would happen. Warren and the other lawmakers say that they're concerned about what all the power use will mean for the environment and consumers. Regarding, former, regarding the former, they state that the emissions data from three of the surveyed companies indicate they emit approximately 1.6 million tons of CO2 annually, or the equivalent of the tailpipe emissions of, don't worry, it's 360,000 cars. 360,000 extra cars on the road 
per year is the amount of CO2 that they are putting into the environment through just Bitcoin mining. And that is just three of them. Bitcoin miners are using huge quantities of electricity that could be used for other priority end uses that contribute to our electrification and climate goals, such as replacing home furnaces with heat pumps. Like I said, that's kind of a tactic to hit home to the consumer because, you know, most people don't can't fathom 360,000 cars. Some people in America don't even have a vehicle that they own. And most people aren't Bitcoin miners or care about the electrification and climate goals of the country. However, a lot of people do have a home with a furnace. So they're trying to, you know, they throw in that little, that tail in there. So you, as someone who may not care about most of this other stuff, you're like, yeah, I would like a new furnace. I would like a heat pump and said, yeah, let's do this. See what I mean? On the latter point, the lawmakers cite a 2021 study from the University of California, Berkeley, that estimated crypto mining in upstate New York raised annual electricity bills by approximately $165 million for small businesses and $79 million for consumers. What's more, they say their investigation doesn't even scratch the surface of the full impact of crypto mining on power use and emissions in the United States. None of the companies provided full and complete information in response to our questions, they know. Yeah, this is the thing, though, is when they're not required to divulge information, why would they? Especially when they're in the field of cryptocurrency. That's like the point of not needing to go and divulge everything you know to a government to then source it out how they see fit and tell you whether or not you're doing a good job. This is, these are just the numbers that they felt the need to report. These aren't the bad things. I mean, let's get real. This isn't even the worst of the worst. So the results of our investigation, which gathered data from just seven companies are disturbing with this limited data alone really revealing that crypto miners are large energy users that account for a significant and rapidly growing amount of carbon emissions. That's the biggest problem here, and that's what really swayed me um, with the I like any sort of factual and perception based things when they put it into you know perspective about the 360,000 cars, how much that it would power Houston, all the residential areas in Houston, and the fact that that's just right now. And when cryptocurrency is just like, you know, some people refer to the infancy stage, I would say we're closer to the toddler stage now in cryptocurrency, um, but we're so early in the lifespan of crypto and crypto mining, different things like this, that this is going to continue growing. That's the thing, is these numbers are going to continue growing larger as crypto grows, as the money behind it grows, and I mean, it's it's rather inevitable, which is why these regulations and these reports are going to be inevitable. You're going to have any country that has a big upstrike in cryptocurrency is going to have a big upstrike in regulation concerns around cryptocurrency. It's just the way it's going to work. All right, guys, that's going to be everything for today's video. Always smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. All comments help the algorithm. Share it around to your friends. Anyone who likes cryptocurrency, any investing, needs a little bit of money and won't start asking you to borrow some, go ahead and show them some investing information they can make themselves, right? Le you know, teach a man how to fish. Do that. Well, except, you know, show him Clay's coins. If you like the video, put a flex and emoji in the comment section down below. As you guys know, shout out to all my true supporters. I love you guys. I'm back. Uh, I had a few days off. But man, I'm enjoying this summer. I hope you guys are too. It's been wicked hot. If you guys want to support the channel, hit the Weeble link and uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. So just in case I go a couple days here and there without uploading, as soon as I do, you'll get that little pop up. And you can click on and, you know, throw the video on a loop, watch it a few times, you know, all that good stuff. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay hydrated. Take